Uh, and as I told you, this show is about entrepreneurs and their success towards uh, their journey towards success. So we're here with the one and only Juma Hevedi, uh, who is a resident uh, who was uh, who was born and has grown in Majengo, and is here with us. Welcome, Juma Hevedi. Thank you very much. So, yeah, who is Juma Hevedi? Uh, Juma Hevedi is a social scientist, a coach, a mentor. A community leader and uh, a community volunteer. That's yes. very nice. Yes. So tell us about your family. I grew up here uh, in this street where we are seated today. This uh, street? Yes, yes, yes. Can yes. You, uh, which specific house? Home uh, is just uh, there. Uh, oh. Like 20 meters uh, from where we are today. The green building over there? Yes, the, not, not the green one, uh, the next one. Or the next the one? The old one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that is where you were born actually? That is where I was born. And you grew up here? That is where I grew up. You used to play here? And this is where one we One touch, Chobo Mango To. One touch, Mustatiri, Musta Banu, Chobo Mango To. Uh, we, were, we were those guys, we were those guys. Uh, masters in them. Wow. <laughs> yes. That is very yes. awesome. So yeah. I'm a third born in a family of uh, mm -hmm. seven. Uh, a family of seven? Yes, uh, ah. we, we are a big family. You mean your big yes. family? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, uh, that is very nice. So tell us also about your school life. Uh, a few meters from where we are seated, uh, there's a church uh, near Sakdem. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I went to uh, Lassari School. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I joined uh, Thika Muslim primary school mm -hmm. uh, in uh, class one uh, up to class eight mm -hmm. and then uh, Chania high school uh, from form one up to uh, form four. Yes. Okay, so you have, you are, you are born here, we are up here and then you schooled in Thika. And then I schooled here in Thika and uh, years later after I was through with uh, form four I joined the uh, Kenya Institute of Management uh -huh. uh, for a diploma in project management okay. and then uh, later on uh, three four years ago I joined Mount Kenya University uh -huh. uh, for a degree in development studies wow. that uh, I have set to graduate uh, this week. So you are a problematic guy. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> if there's such a word. If there's such a word, yes, you, uh, Now that you've done project management, I'm yes. sure you have involved yourself with a lot of projects. Yes. Uh, can you name just a few? Uh, we've had uh, a lot of empowerment projects, of course. Uh, we've had a lot of disaster projects. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, in Red Cross, mm -hmm. I had been posted in Marsabit uh, for almost a year. Wow. I was also posted uh, in uh, Norway for a year also. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, we were handling a lot of youth projects uh, that revolves around empowerment, revolves around engendering of the youth, mm -hmm. and generally bringing up uh, the potential of the youth uh, into the fore so that they can be able to make a difference uh, moving forward. So, uh, if you are asked to go, to go back in time, in time and maybe go back to primary school or nursery school or campus or high school, which yes. one would you choose? Uh, primary school was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why primary school? Primary school was fun. I mean, uh, think a Muslim, uh, oh, it was fun. Uh, it's just a few meters from where we are today and uh, uh, a lot of things happen there. That is where a lot of formative years Knowing how to speak broken English, uh, being given uh, montos. The Monto, I remember to, Monto. Uh, we used to wear. It uh, was a wire with chart bottle tops. Yes. And then you used to wear it if you speak mother tongue, your mother tongue. Yes, language. yes, yes. yes. It, was yeah. a mark, it, it was almost like a mark of shame <laughs> that this guy cannot speak Kiswahili or English. So uh, that was fun. That was fun uh, growing up. Yeah, I remember Monto. So, um, so many people want to be associated with successful people, yes, but they don't understand the journey. So uh, some people have it rough, some people have it easy. Yes. How would you describe your journey? Has it been easy? Has it been rough? Oh, my journey has been uh, a journey with a lot of uh, mixed, uh, both fortunes and misfortunes. Mm -hmm. uh, we grew up in this uh, place, and uh, we grew up. I grew up in a, a poor household. Mm -hmm. uh, it was difficult to have uh, food, it was difficult to even have shoes and uniform for schools. Uh, but uh, also in my high school I also spent more time out of school mm -hmm. than uh, in school because we've been sent away for school fees. And like I've said, uh, we, 
I grew up in a family of uh, seven. Uh, yeah, seven that's kids. A, that's that's a big number. Yes, uh, it's a big number. So uh, basically, there are a lot of other kids behind you, and there are also others uh, that uh, needs to be taken care of. Yeah. So it 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 was uh, a journey that uh, was both exciting and, uh, of course, uh, uh, sad. Uh, but it's also a journey that was full of uh, moments and moments that uh, we get to share to share this uh, up to now and uh, moving forward I think uh, it's a journey that has been able to uh, create and make the person that I am today. Yeah, yes. true, I'm yes. sure it has molded you. Oh yes, 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 yes. I'm, the I'm, person you are. Yes, I'm happy of course uh, to have grown up in such a situation. So do you have any disappointments? that you'd love to share, maybe in the past, something that you go back in life and maybe rectify or do it differently? No, well, uh, if I was asked to go back in time and uh, uh, do something differently from what I did, uh, I don't think I would be able to want to do that, because to do that then it would alter the person that I finally became. So, I did, of course, there were moments that were low, there were moments that were high, there were moments that uh, you felt that you made a, a wrong decision, but uh, then those moments, it's a summation of all those moments that make the kind of person that I am uh, today. So, I wouldn't want to change anything in the past. I would actually want to appreciate it more so that it informs me on how to move on wow. uh, in my future. Wow, yes. That is a very good answer. Yes. I am also motivated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, now, um, uh, what is it that you do currently? Uh, currently, I run a few uh, businesses uh, uh, on uh, bulk messages uh, systems and uh, uh, cleaning uh, services. Uh, but I also run an organization called uh, Ajibika Africa, which uh, we founded uh, about five, six years ago. Uh, the program's uh, coordinator. But uh, besides that, uh, I've been appointed to various uh, bodies. Uh, to sit in the board of uh, uh, management, board of directors in schools. Uh, key among them is uh, Thika Wati, uh, the CEO of company that I sit in the board today. Wow. Yes. So, you can do a maji in a figure sim. I'm going to leave a maji. I'm going to leave a maji. I'm going to leave a maji. I'm going to Kenya. Leave a maji. I'm going to leave a maji. I'm going to leave a maji. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, every leadership opportunity that uh, we are given mm -hmm. is an opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an opportunity to be able to, you know, uh, add some value uh, to communities, to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, for me, it's it's just a chance to serve and chance to do something more and uh, be better uh, at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Yes. So do you have any subsidiary projects from what you do? You know, in Kenya, almost everyone is a hustler. <laughs> I also call myself prof a professional hustler because I do so many things. Yes. I'm an MC, I'm a team building instructor, yes. I'm involved in farming yeah. and all that. So do you have any kind of projects? Like yes, uh, I do a lot of consultancy mm -hmm. uh, in governance, mm -hmm. uh, in leadership, uh, in health and uh, safety. Uh, which has been uh, what has informed my background for uh, many years, uh, even in my work at uh, uh, Red Cross. So yes, I can say that is part of the side hustles. I do give uh, lectures uh, on governance and on leadership. I do write uh, uh, articles uh, on them, on socio and economic uh, issues. So yes, uh, I'm also part of the uh, movement of Kenyans. That's nice. So yeah. what do you think about entrepreneurship and would you consider yourself an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur to me is uh, that person who dare to be bold enough to try something mm -hmm. and uh, that person with the confidence to be able to, you know, uh, even though the odds are against uh, him or even though he does not have all the answers but tries at least uh, to be able to do something. So to me that's who an entrepreneur uh, is. And yes, uh, my life has been full of uh, those moments. Uh, moments of trials, moments of uh, failure, moments of uh, getting down and uh, getting back up again. And uh, yes, I would, uh, you know, probably define myself as uh, one of the entrepreneurs uh, that uh, we have, but uh, not in the classes that uh, a lot of other people have a definition for. Okay, yes, that's nice. So you mentioned that you've been to Norway. 
Yes, not just United States of Nakuru. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the farthest I've gone yes. is, <laughs> I think, Samburu. <laughs> Just in Kenya. Yes. <laughs> Just been around Kenya. Yeah. So you've been to Norway. Yes, I've been to Norway. Oh, it was an exciting journey uh, yeah. to Norway. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we were in that course, I was uh, uh, in charge of uh, information dissemination uh, at uh, Thika Branch. I had, of course, been posted to a lot of other uh, posts in Tana River, in, uh, like I said, Mandera, Moyale. Uh, then uh, Red Cross uh, was looking. There was a program that was starting, a youth exchange program. And they were looking for two uh, people to send. Every branch in Kenya was asked to nominate uh, one person, and I was nominated from my branch. Uh, out of uh, 52 people who applied, we were shortlisted about uh, 25 of us, and wow. two of us. So were... you had to go through some vetting. Oh yes, we went through some vetting. Of course, they wanted to look at uh, the caliber of person, the quality of that person, whether that person will be able to represent them. Even though yes, a youth but someone who can be able to represent uh, uh, the organization adequately. So we were picked two of us, uh, myself from uh, Thika and another one from uh, Mombasa. So it was a selection which was done in all over the country? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, everyone was uh, asked, uh, every branch was asked to nominate one person. Wow. And uh, from that one person then they would come up with a short list and then they will interview them. We went through a physical interview and uh, I guess uh, we impressed uh, the panel and uh, we were picked up uh, uh, the two of us. It must have been very competitive. It was a competitive uh, thing. It was okay. Competitive. <coughs> so now I've heard that you've done a lot of projects, you've involved yourself in a lot of activities, both income generating and voluntary. So I would love you to mention which is your biggest achievement? Uh, for me, I cannot pick uh, one specific one. Uh, I have been through moments, and every one of the moments have led to the next uh, moment. Uh, the biggest thing that I have uh, done for quite some time uh, is uh, mentorship. The mentorship project that uh, I had begun uh, while, of course, at uh, Red Cross, I would consider that as the biggest uh, thing because from that uh, it brought out uh, leaders, it brought out um, key people in various sectors, some of them today are in uh, the military, others are in uh, uh, the health sector, others are in the police. And uh, from that uh, project, uh, personally, every time we give someone an opportunity or a youth uh, an opportunity, um, a young person an opportunity, and uh, cheer them on, make them believe that there's someone cheering them on, and uh, that uh, you were there to guide them along the way, that has always been my biggest achievement. So, my achievement is the empowerment uh, of uh, individuals and communities. Mm, yes, that's nice. Mm. So now, um, when 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 you're growing up, yes, maybe after high school, maybe in campus, yeah. there are these people who usually me- mentor us. Yes, they give us counsel, they correct us whenever we're wrong. Yes. we call them role models, role models or mentors. Yes. Some are even our best friends. Yes. So do you have such a person or such people whom you can refer to? Oh yes, uh, I. some people consider me a great leader, not because of me, but because I stand on the shoulders of great people. Great people who have seen me through the journey. And this journey has been an exciting from the beginning that uh, I, have, I had mentioned earlier uh, to the place where I am today. I continue to be guided by the elders, uh, uh, but uh, notably uh, uh, about uh, two or three. One of them is the headmaster of my primary school. Uh, His name was Mr. Kabuka. Mr. Kabuka is the earliest people perhaps who uh, realized uh, the leadership in me when uh, he appointed me the uh, assistant head boy uh, when I was, I think, in class seven or class uh, uh, six. I had no idea what that entailed. But then when I was in class eight, I was uh, a head boy. But it was from his teachings and from his guidance uh, every now and then. He was a tough teacher, yes. But a lot of things that he would uh, uh, talk to us and tell us continue to make sense to us up to now. So in those years, uh, Mr. Kabuka came out as one person who really had uh, the best interest uh, in us and uh, we rose to the occasion. Uh, we, of course, uh, had uh, 
good performance uh, in the school due to his uh, leadership. Uh, then uh, later on in high school, it was a principal who had come, a new principal came in from, uh, for when I was in Form 3. Uh, we just uh, met in the corridor and he called me to his office and uh, he asked me if I could set up a football team uh, in high school. I had never been a coach in my life. I had no idea what uh, <laughs> what uh, uh, football largely entailed, but I knew how to play, but I was not good at it. So that's how uh, I managed to become a team manager for the football team, and uh, we took the first team ever uh, to the national schools competition wow. uh, for Chani High School. The year Chani High called. School boys. No, it was Chani High School. You were mixed school. Oh, it was a mixed school. Yes, 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 yes. It was a big school. Okay. So we took Chani High School for national competition in Kakamega. Mm -hmm. That was in 1997. And it was one of my most proud uh, moments. Uh, later on in life, I got to interact uh, with uh, various other individuals who headed corporates, who headed uh, uh, departments, and who again contributed and added on into uh, the mentorship that I have uh, continued to gain. I listen a lot and I want to learn a lot uh, from every other person, no matter young or old or even of my age. Yes. Okay. You must have been, a, that must have been a very exciting story. Yeah. Yeah. So recently you just declared that you want to buy for Pika and P. Yes. Pika has been on the limelight of politics in Kenya. Yes. So why now? Uh, for quite some time, uh, various people who have mentored me mm -hmm. and uh, the others who continue to mentor me have uh, seen that in me and continue to ask me uh, to try out, uh, to change the face of uh, politics, uh, uh, at least in uh, Thika. Uh, I've been a bit uh, afraid, and uh, but I finally accepted that uh, invitation uh, from them. And after a lot of deliberation, uh, I asked them to allow me to go and uh, ask my elders, the people who uh, brought me up, uh, the people who uh, have known me since I was young, the elders from Majengo and my Muslim elders, uh, to ask for my permission uh, if uh, they are going to allow me to uh, get into politics. And uh, they were very excited. Uh, I was given permission. There was a prayer session that was uh, held. And I was given the blessing to go out there and uh, this, you know, engage uh, with others. So, politics uh, is something that, uh, de that that determines a lot of things in our lives. Uh, and everyone needs to be involved in what kind of politics we end up having uh, in here. I don't consider myself uh, a politician that much, but uh, I consider myself a leader. So the moment we begin to define what kind of politics uh, we want, then we will begin to find individuals that can be able to get us to that kind of uh, politics that we want. And uh, I believe it's about time, it's about time that we changed uh, the uh, issue. I've not been uh, in politics for so long, but uh, for the long I've been alive, I know that we need to change the politics that we play in this town. So, yeah, maybe they saw something in you that you couldn't see in yourself. Yes. Yeah, that is very good. Cool. Yes. So, Dika has had two MPs. Yes. And I must say that they've done a good job. Yes. So, what legacy will you bring on the table? Uh, I believe that uh, a good idea must give way to a better idea. And a better idea must give way to an even better idea. Uh, 2013, we had a good idea. Uh, up to 2017, that led to a better idea. Uh, that better idea today uh, wants to give way to an even better idea. We have concentrated a lot on a lot of physical issues. We have forgotten the uh, community approach into problem solution. So, the thing that I want to bring on the table is a community approach concept into determining, for instance, uh, issues to do with varsity, uh, issues to do with development, issues to do with the priority that uh, needs to be given. And uh, having grown up and worked within community for quite some time, 
uh, I have uh, come to appreciate and come to even train uh, those concepts that work. For instance, uh, why should uh, people all the way from uh, Bolivar come to collect uh, battery forms uh, or deliver them in one set? Why can't we have smaller community uh, groups within the residents to be able to identify the most needy cases that deserve the battery? That way, you are not only giving them the opportunity to do so, but you are also asking them to be able to consider the most needy. Everyone, of course, is needy, but uh, even when you don't have money, you know uh, there is someone else who probably uh, didn't eat yet. Before. So that one is most is more needy than uh, all the are. Ah. So my approach will be to uh, present those uh, uh, issues so that we can find these common solutions or community solutions to community problems. Yes. So that's a very nice angle. Uh, but there's another perspective, because as I've been speaking to a lot of young people, yes. most of them are fed up with politicians. Yes. They are saying that they won't vote. So I don't know how you plan to convince the young people to, to vote. Because if you're vying, you will need the young people to vote, that's for sure, because they make the highest percentage of that voters in Kenya. That, that is very true. Yeah. Uh, the youth are not uh, the concept that we are continuously being told about leaders of tomorrow. But the youth are the biggest stakeholder uh, in this country. The youth are the biggest uh, stakeholders, both in their lives and in the lives of uh, other people. So when they decide uh, that they will not be involved uh, in the uh, political process, uh, it will be a very unfortunate uh, move. Because then every decision that will be made by those that they do not get involved in will affect them directly. For instance, uh, when you talk about the youth, you're talking about people who are accessing batteries. Uh, those people that you put into office or you don't put into office determine what kind of bursary uh, that you get, determine what percentage of it uh, you will get, determine the percentage of the uh, resources to be allocated to schools, uh, determine the percentages of things to be allocated to your health care. Your... So, so long as uh, you're a young person, I think you need to be at the forefront uh, to uh, be determining. But having said that, uh, I have uh, interacted also with quite a number of uh, young people. Most of my programs have been with, uh, with the youth. And uh, for the first time, I see so many of them uh, say that they are going to get involved. In fact, in my team, almost about uh, 70 to 80 percent is a lot of young people. They have taken the initiative. They are now designing campaign uh, strategies. They are designing uh, ways of communicating. They are designing. In fact, for the first time, they are now fully uh, involved uh, into uh, matters uh, that uh, involve uh, politics. So I would still continue to urge them to uh, get involved because by getting involved then you get to not only choose those leaders but put them to question anytime something is not going right. Yes. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so that's a good angle yeah. and I love that you've involved the youth in your endeavors. Yes. So now um, you've grown in Fika, you've schooled in Fika, you've done your projects in Fika. Uh, bet some have been done in Norway and some other parts of Kenya and the world. So, uh, my question is, there must have been gaps that you have identified and you want to bridge those gaps. Can you mention like three gaps you noticed and you would love to work on them? For example, if you're elected or in your capacity also. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we have done quite a lot, of course, uh, in education. But uh, one gap that still exists uh, in education is uh, the, soft, uh, the software part of it. Uh, how best do we involve people that have gone through these schools that have shaped us? Uh, in universities they call them uh, alumni, so in secondary schools they call them. A lot of people are uh, involved, uh, are involved uh, with their high school, but uh, few of them are involved in uh, primary school. Uh, uh, now, besides that, we have a gap in uh, secondary school transition. The government uh, wants 100% uh, transition uh, for secondary school. But uh, 
But uh, then uh, we do not have enough uh, uh, primary school, uh, secondary schools. Uh, Dogo, to to Apo na skiambo zina make noise na kafanyo fasti. Nika mi me dinyonga. Me buzi. Iko sawa. Eh. Mone me ruka iwe ha kunti. No, this is the beauty now of the place <laughs> I grew up. Yes. Eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is yeah. the majengo now. I know. At least it's okay, so you can continue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, we still remain uh, with a gap. We have over 50 schools uh, in Pika uh, today that are primary schools. Uh, but uh, we have uh, roughly about five or so uh, schools that are day secondary schools. We need to invest more in day secondary schools. We are not going to take education seriously if we are not investing in uh, day secondary schools. The schools that are national, county and uh, extra county, uh, of course we'll admit those uh, students that perform very well. How about the other students or who scored 100 marks, uh, 200 marks? What do we do with these people? You know, if we do not find places where these guys uh, uh, will complete their education, they don't have to score A's, they don't have to score B's. You know, but they just need to be through with the uh, basic education so that we can be able to begin engaging them uh, with uh, tertiary or extra skills. Now. That's a gap that exists uh, in education. The other gap that exists, uh, of course, uh, is in the manner in which we get to choose uh, what we do uh, in terms of career. For those that have uh, finished uh, high school, we have not uh, been taking too keen interest uh, on uh, tertiary institutions. For instance, the polytechnics, uh, courses such as electrical, uh, engineering, courses such as uh, plumbing, uh, survey, quantity surveyors, uh, masonry, you know, those kind of things are things are jobs that are going to be defining our economy uh, today and in future. And I'm saying that because over the next uh, 50 to probably 100 years, Kenya will be defined by the infrastructure uh, development. A lot of that has been going on, and uh, a lot of road construction is happening, power construction, issues to do with telecommunication. All these things are cont uh, continuing. We need to look through such kind of uh, uh, innovation. Then, of course, the second thing is uh, the issues to do with the technology. Uh, over the next, uh, of course, few years, or over the last five years, moving forward, uh, technology has been defining our way of life. Look at the uh, money transfer services, uh, for instance, uh, access to banking. Every bank today is reducing on the number of employees so that they capitalize more uh, on uh, uh, technology, on the app development, and so on and so forth. So these are things that will be defining uh, uh, our lives uh, moving forward. Issues to do with artificial intelligence. They will be defining our lives uh, moving forward. So we need to equip uh, young people or our youth in such kind of uh, skills. We need to invest more in those kind of things so that they be able to define how we move forward uh, uh, as a country. But then also as a, a third thing, of course, is the gap that exists, uh, for instance, in the youth. Many young people are involved in sports. And there are so many of them are footballers or uh, any other uh, sport that they engage in. However, we also forget another aspect. Football, of course, is something that uh, sometimes is a hobby or it's a natural thing uh, for us. But beyond uh, the sport, how do we engage these young people to utilize their time? That sport is just uh, uh, part time but they can go and take a certificate in, uh, uh, say, plumbing, or a certificate in electrical engineering, uh, and then they come and play football. They can do these two things. They can chew gum and scale the stairs at the same time. Football, again, does not uh, continue beyond a certain age. Uh, you only shine up to a certain age, because there are also young people coming up, uh, taking up the uh, mantle. So how do we transist? How do we uh, engage and how do we collect all these uh, things? That is what leadership now is all about. And does not require a politician, it requires uh, a leader. How do you manage <laughs> to have all that content in mind? Uh, you can say it's just, uh, <laughs> life has taught me a lot of things. But also collaboration and uh, uh, listening and observing and reading and learning and researching. Uh, all these uh, uh, make the whole uh, me. Uh, plus listening a lot and, uh, you know, creating that kind of uh, focus. How will the world look like in the next 10 years, in the next 15, 20 years? Yeah, that's, I have no idea, it's God. All right. <laughs> Something else I've noticed. Yes. 
as we are sitting here. Yes. Kuna hizi zinaniattack sana na zitakuwa attack. Kwa nini zinajiwanga wageni? Oh, ah, wageni <laughs> watu wa majengo. Zimeshinda uh, zinanisumbua huku. <laughs> watu wa majengo lazima wakuliwe na huku. Angalia. <laughs> na hizi. <laughs> Hata paka ikuje takuma wewe. Kati kikaka hizi mbozi zitaanza yeah. kunitoza hivi. Eh, yeah, inajua zinajiwa watu wa majengo, wanajua watu wa kijeni kidani. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So now, yes. Uh, we we almost coming to the end of our interview. Yes. And I must say that I've, I've learned a lot from you. So uh, the last thing I would love, to, uh, I would want you to share with the, with our audience over here. Yes. I want you to look at the camera first of all, and I want you to encourage someone. Yes. Who's maybe having a rough a rough time. Yes. And maybe people who don't know what decisions to make in their life. Yes. We have so many. We have yeah. so many people who are in states of conundrums, and they don't know how to go about it. So I'd love you to give us a parting shot, a take-home message to our audience over here, and I want you to be a blessing to them. Well, uh, to the audience uh, that is uh, out there, God grants us three things uh, in our life. Every generation and every individual is given those three things. One of them is time. Every 24 hours you're given an opportunity to be able to become something uh, different. Every 24 hours you're given an opportunity uh, to be able to transform your community and transform your society. The second thing that you're given uh, by our maker or by God is work. And the third thing is purpose. The day you know your purpose, you will be able to know what your work is. The day who, who, that you will know your work, you will be able to utilize your time better. So let's find our purpose. Sometimes our purpose is not on becoming better, but making someone else better. Sometimes our work uh, involves us being able to be useful to the community, us being useful and being uh, empathetic and, uh, you know, uh, creative and uh, people who are of value and people who are of uh, use. So those are the, th the three things that uh, we are given. Uh, every one of us and every generation. However, we are also given and asked to look for three people within uh, us. The first person are people who are educated. The second uh, category of people in generations are people who are resourced. And the third person are people who are leaders. Now, leadership is something that is entrusted in all of you and in all of us, no matter how small, no matter how big. So, don't give up. It's not yet time to give up. Do not uh, feel that you've been uh, left out. Get involved today. Get involved with your life, get involved with your community, and get involved with your country. Thank you. Wow. Juma. Yes. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It has been enlightening, it has been empowering, and it has been a good interview. Yes. How I wish every young person would have a chance to view this uh, this show. So uh, we've come to the end of our interview, and I've been I've, I've been your interviewer, James Ndishu, commonly known as Doshi Doshi. We've had a first guest here, Juma Hemedi, and it has been a great honor having him. We've learned a lot about things that he has done. He has been so articulate. Uh, he has mentioned even the years. He, ha he has told us about his success. And it's so hard to imagine that a person who was born in such a street can go to such lengths, fly outside the country to represent the youths in Kenya, engage in so many projects. We've seen how he has been an entrepreneur and his journey towards success. So it's, uh, I don't know what to say. I don't have the right words to say, but it has been awesome. It has been an awesome interview. We've learned a lot and we hope that we'll have even more guests who are going to enlighten us even more. Uh, from Vunana Arts Africa, we thank you and uh, we're hoping to see you in our next interview. Keep it locked. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. Sana. thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah, we are now. Good time. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Yes.
Ne joe we 